everyone. Um, it's the solstice day and it's almost four o'clock and I have my last televisit of the day at four and I'm really ready to be done and on my vacation. I'm ready. Okay, I want to share with you um, something else that has been on my needles. This is, I don't know how visible it's going to be, but it is the spirally pullover by Pickles. I I think it's a Norwegian or Swedish um, yarn brand and it's it's in a very dark yarn obviously so I don't know how visible the pattern will be but it's e and easy and there it's somewhat good it's got a lot of ribbing doesn't it I don't think I did a provisional cast on couldn't be bothered apparently but this is out of hand spun it is my um, Romney that Carrie from Serenity Farm. My wool mitten shared with me and the it's a Romney lamb. His name is Prince and the fleece is just so stunning like a true black. I'm not sure. This is like the real color. So gorgeous and squishy and good. Um, kind of a problematic fleece from the shearing perspective. Lots of second cuts. Um, but worth working through that because the result is just stunning. And I used, used prints in my shellography shawl as well, sort of the main framing color, this dark color. And I've got more of it on my wheel. Um, yeah, it's going to be like a three or four or five project fleece. So really good stuff. I haven't touched this in months. And I know that I need probably to tink back to the beginning of the round <laughs> because I think I, I don't know, maybe I didn't mess this up, but I might have just on this last round. But maybe I'll be able to get back to this once, once my brain can turn off work for a while. I've cherished doing these vlogs. Um, they're for me as much as they are for the people who watch them. And if you are watching and commenting, especially, or even just pressing the like button, that's just a little like sparkle added to my day. Um, and definitely, uh, I appreciate that. Morning, everyone. I want to share with you today the sound ID function of Merlin. Uh, I think it's a really great way to get a visual representation of birdsong with the spectrograph. And I think that most people who are sighted benefit from a visual input when they are sort of trying to own some knowledge or really lay down their neural pathways about it. So for this, it really lets you use your visual and auditory senses, and you can refer back to these recordings if you need to. All right, so I'm gonna select sound ID, I'm at the pond, and there is some construction noise from somebody getting a new roof in back of me, but we'll see what we pick up. So part of this, for part of this, I'm gonna be quite quiet and see what happens. So I'm gonna click on sound ID and then this microphone, and you can see down here it says, sound recordings and supported birds. We'll probably look at sound recordings later on, but I'm gonna go ahead and click um, the microphone in a minute once this guy with a radio on his bike goes by so we don't hear that. 
All right, let's see what happens. And again, I have my location services turned off, so there could be some random birds popping up here, but you will definitely need location turned on to get the best results. Cedar wax wings are fruit eaters. I know there's an elderberry bush around here, but I thought it had been picked clean. Yes, definitely seeing that guy. Right there in the grass. And again, it's lighting up yellow because he's singing, calling. A song and a call are different. So there's no red-winged blackbird here today, um, and I think that's just because the location service isn't turned on, so the results aren't quite as accurate as they would have been. You can imagine. Okay, I'm gonna stop the recording because once you go to roughly two minutes, um, if you go past roughly two minutes, I should say, the recording will not save. And I like to have these recordings to refer back to. Um, in case I hear an unusual bird song or bird call, then I can sort of name the recording with that bird's name and go back and listen to it and compare what I heard on the recording with um, the recorded sounds when I do the explore bird function. Okay, so let me show you one other thing here. All right, I wanna hear the song Sparrow and sort of verify that that's indeed what was uh, being heard. So I'm going to click on the song Sparrow picture basically and it'll take me in the recording to where that bird was singing. Let's listen. And that's how you're able to verify. Let's click on the crow. I'm not sure if we're hearing it but we all know what a crow sounds like. Anyway, that, that is how you use the um, sound ID function. <laughs> Carolina Wren. Lovely. Hey everyone, so I'm back on my sound recording pages. I wanted to show you this. If you go to sound ID and then my sound recordings, I wanted to show you an example of one I named, do you see it down here? Black crowned night heron. This was a pretty uncommon bird. It was a lifer, which means a bird I'd never heard or seen before. This was in Chincoteague in the evening of the 22nd of October. So let's listen. The way I named it is that I went up to the top right corner. Um, once the recording is saved, you can go back and listen to it. You can name it like I did. And oh my goodness, it's taking forever. Okay. So I heard a tufted titmouse and a black crowned night heron. Um, that orange circle just means it's uncommon for that place for that time. So let's click on the black crowned night heron and listen, and then I'll show you what this arrow to the right of its name can do. Okay, and we're not turned up enough. Hang on, let's try again.
Okay, that sounds like a bit of a small dog barking. Let's listen again. Wow, wow. That's what it sounds like. Okay, so um, let's go to that arrow. Um, again, this is the black crowned, not the yellow crowned. Let's go to the arrow. And look, you've got all the calls down here. So we can listen to the calls. That's basically what it sounded like. A little barky call. Yeah, something like that. Here's another one. Nope, not that. All right, so I think it was kind of like this. So let's listen again in the recording. I hope you all can hear. It's somehow very faint for me. All right, I'm going to click on the picture. It'll take us to the place in the recording. You can see those little blips on the spectrograph. Yeah, that sounds the same. So that's one way you can refer and confirm and verify that the sound that Merlin says was the bird actually is the bird. Birds of love you send me.